Hi, good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Thank you for uh, your patience with our hour and a half delayed start here this morning. Um, let's see. And again, as always, let's see, it is August 27th of 2021. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to drop them over here onto the questions tab. <clears throat> and let's see. Got quite a few questions here from the internet that we'll address first here this morning. And just checking over here on the chat tab. So if you are here live, it's good to see everybody. And if you're here on the recording, um, a lot of great people that are showing up here today, as usual. Idaho, Maine, North Carolina, Australia, Albuquerque. Fantastic. So, um, again, if you just want to drop your questions on the question tab, and we'll start with some of the questions from the internet. And actually, we will start with our three breaths this morning. Get into the heart space. Especially with technology this week. It's been quite a challenging week with technology, I tell you. Um, so... Anyway, we'll take our three breaths or however many breaths you take to go into the heart. So just putting your attention onto the physical heart, finding your light, your soul's fire, just using your imagination and connecting heart to heart with the earth, breathing in that light of the earth, right up into the heart, up through the feet, into the heart. Next, connecting to the heart of creation, source, soul, creator, God. Breathing in that light into the heart. In that third breath, breathing in earth and sky, becoming that column of light that's grounded, connected, and in the heart space. All right. Yeah, Samson, happy Friday for sure. It's you know, a lot of beautiful things going on in the world right now. All right, so let's see our fifth question Friday questions. Okay, so our first one comes from Anna. Considering all the new, these new tools, will the pyramid sets be changed, such as, you know, uh, some different ideas, such as the Divine I Am Taurus in place of the Cosmic Sun Disk, um, a different Gaia sphere, things like that. So. You know, we already have made one update to the Ascension Pyramids. Um, the update that we made to the Ascension Pyramids is that now they include, instead of the Harmonic Creation Field Trio set of rings, that home set, we are now um, sending these Ascension Pyramids out with the Alchemist set, that home set. Um, so the Alchemist set does bump it up a bit. Um, you know, and you can use any size of Alchemist set. So if you happen to have an Ascension Pyramid and you'd like to update the energetics just a little bit. So so here's the thing, too, is the Ascension Pyramids are already carrying these energies and they're already being updated. Um, but you can still add that new set of Alchemy rings to it because the Alchemist rings are... You know, when you put that on the pyramid, it, you'll still feel quite a boost within that pyramid structure and outside of it. Um, and as far as the other new tools, such as the Divine I Am Taurus, now you can use the Divine I Am Taurus in place of the Cosmic Sun Disk for those pyramids. Um, and it is a thought right now to create, because... The Ascension Pyramids, you have to have that cosmic sun disk slipped into there to keep the legs out at that 60 degree angle or close to. And so that sun disk fits perfectly in nests inside of that pyramid structure. So the cosmic or the um, the Divine I Am Taurus, which is much smaller, I'm looking at ways to create either a separate plate that you can put a Divine I Am Taurus in or else just simply a ring to slip in there to be able to nest your divine I am Taurus. So eventually, yes, we will find a way to physically hold that divine I am Taurus 
inside of the ascension pyramids um, as a alternative to the cosmic sun disk. Um, to me, um, I, I have put my divine I am Taurus right on top of that cosmic sun disk in the pyramids. And you can feel a little bit of a, of a shift, but it's not a holy wow shift with that. Where adding the um, the alchemist rings, he, it's a definite shift. You can feel with that. So, hopefully, that answers the question on the the new tools and the ascension pyramids. But you know, in reality, the way they are now, you don't have to worry about getting any updated tools for it because the ascension pyramids are phenomenal, and um, I really don't think you have to worry about updating them. But at least not right now for sure. Uh, another question was, will you be will you consider making the chalice Hecka class bracelet? This one. As the in a size smaller. So yeah, that's that's something that we were waiting to see how many people would request that and to tell you the truth anna you're the first person that we've had that has requested that um and as far as making these chalice heck of class smaller um we we may or may not do that right now we are working on some other really fun new experimental pieces which are these of course they have a soldered end sacred measures so when we make a ring, or let's say, when we make something of this nature that does not have a connection, but the ends are soldered, it is still creating a field, though, because um, we used to make these water wands for dancing with water, and the water wands were simply just a, a twisted wire with the end soldered, and it was just a straight measurement, but they still had a twisted wire. Now, it was still creating a field, but the field on that, to me, it presents as just like this little caterpillar looking field, you know, where each one of the, the twists are. It's like there's just a very small field on the outside edge of those. So that would be like these particular bracelets here. Unlike a tensor field, which is, you know, it's very strong and it emits out for miles out of the center of the ring. Um, these style here of the bracelet are not going to be as as far reaching in the environment but to me they are still just as strong and potent as the Hecate class which is a closed loop ring because it is that field as long as that field of the tool is connecting into your field it's doing the work um, so let's see did i answer the question there so as far as making a smaller chalice heck of class um we're kind of waiting to see what is going to come through with our new bracelets once we once we get um, more further in depth with those so let's see i do believe we had a couple other questions here uh, let's see. Uh, this is a question from Wendy. And she says, curious about the energy of the pyramid. Oh, wait, sorry. My apologies. This is um, a question I'll have to answer via email. It's a little bit more in depth and um, more personal questions. Let's see. So this one comes from Lauren. Okay, so Lauren is asking to see the activator that I had mounted on the hood of my car, why I did it, and how I did it. So yes, actually, I did take a picture of the activator that is mounted to the hood of my car. Um, let's see. That's it there. It's kind of, well, gosh. It doesn't show up too well here on the phone, but it's rather patinaed. 
Now, I did dip my activator in a epoxy, or epoxy, the plant-based resin. Um, now, the why I did it, I tell you, I've had one of these on the front of my vehicle for, for the past probably eight years, I'm guessing six years. And we actually use that sticky tape. It's a florist tape that they use for um, holding flowers together underwater. So it's a waterproof tape. And it's a florist tape that we use on our cell phone tabs for those sticky backs. Um, so that's what I do is I take a couple of strips of that florist tape and I put on underneath and I stick the activator there and it stays. Um, why I do that? So the activator is creating sacred space and it is also doing the clearing work and it can also to me it's creating like a bubble around my space and it's my intention so when i go someplace like on a drive i'm getting ready to go to clinton iowa so i just imagine that bubble that is around my car from that activator i imagine that bubble extending all the way to my destination and it keeps it clear from deer um, a lot of people ask me about my activator. I say it's my fuzz buster. Makes me invisible to police radar, but not to truckers. Um, <laughs> so um, it's it's all in, it, it holds intention and amplifies those intentions. Um, but yeah, I love having the activator on the hood of the car. Let's see, and another question. You know, I think that I might have missed a question here. Let me check one more time on my emails just to make sure. Oh, yes, this one is from Denise. Uh, so the question from the Denise was, can you explain the difference between the Divine I Am Taurus and the Divine I Am Generator? And so basically the, the field itself, the, the energetics of the field is going to be the same um you know holding that space for that deep release through all soul aspects through all incarnations through um the programs the beliefs the traumas everything that you will allow and that your soul is ready for you to release and that you will allow this will happen with instantly um it just takes going into the heart space you know, for some of this deeper stuff that we're not sure whether we want to let go of or not. And, and this is kind of an unconscious thing because when I was going through all my deep, dark dives, my sister Brenda would always tell me, just let go. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm holding on to. Um, and that's, that's the way almost all of us are. We, we very rarely know the traumas and dramas that we hold from lifetimes. So when you are in the field of the Divine I Am Taurus or the Divine I Am um, Generator, and you want to get in to do that deep release just go into the heart space have the intention of allowing your soul to release harmonize clear everything that no longer serves you take those deep breaths and just keep surrendering to your soul and allow um, consciously allow so that's the similarities between those two tools now, the differences between the, the generator and the Taurus is still the fact that the Taurus is creating a different field, is creating a movement, it is creating the toroidal field. That is why it's called the Taurus, it's the toroidal field. And so it's creating that donut shaped field that goes both ways, kind of like how the Earth electromagnetics is, but this goes both ways and it spins both ways. So this tube torus or toroidal field that comes out of that divine I am torus as that energy mover, um, to me, it's, it's, it's just moving energy. It's keeping everything flowing within that space. Um, and to me, that is more of a bringing the balance to the things that are out of balance, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever it is. So like, let's say the Taurus, um, there was people down in Golden, Colorado that used to have, um, used the Harmony Tauruses way back when we made the Harmonies, even the Galactics, um, that they would use them in their cancer treatment facilities. 
um, because for one, when you take that Taurus, and, the, and this is still what a lot of us do, is if we have an ache or a pain or something going on in the physical, we'll take the Taurus and we'll put it directly onto the space. Because of that toroidal field, it is harmonizing what is not in harmony. And of course, anything that is a dis-ease or a distress is out of harmony and out of balance. And so that Taurus just brings those fields more into harmony. Um, the generator, it covers about a city block in the Divine I Am or in, versus the Divine I Am Taurus, which covers about the size of a house. Um, which that, that Divine I Am Taurus is the first one of the Tauruses that actually extends out and works more in the environment versus just very much in the personal field. So the Divine I Am Taurus, I love that one for the fact that it is working in an environment as well as in your personal field within your personal space. Um, so that, I believe, is all for our questions on the internet. Pardon me, I had to get to my tea before it sits here. And... Okay, so going to chat. Um, oh, cool, Rosa, you said you added a spinner to your Divine I Am Taurus and it cools down the whole room. That is awesome. You know, uh, we've we've had reports of people who use certain tools like on their wood stove. And and we did the experiment once at their house, too. And it's like you could feel that um, before we put this device on their wood stove that, you know, you could feel a heat directly in front of you. But it's like after we put that device on, it's like you could feel the heat all around you. I don't know. Interesting concepts um, working with the tools and and temperatures so that's really awesome rosa that you noted that it's uh doing a cooling effect in the home all right so we're going to go over here to the questions tab and this one's from Ethan. hey Ethan, thank you for sending me those cool photos of your mandala and all the tools sitting on it powerful piece so about the regeneration tensor field generator when asked how far the field of the generator expands out, the answer was, how far do you want it to? <laughs> right? Plus now with the energetics of the divine I am generator added to it, my question is, is there no limit, no time in space, right? Yes. And that is something that Brenda has always said too with the tools is that, yes, you can expand those fields out indefinitely. They may not hold in that expansive space unless your attention and intention is there and held onto them but it might um, because i don't want to put any limits on those or cut create any rules for that because we are all so flipping powerful of beings and the things that we're able to do now is not the same that we were able to do a year ago and so when you hold, when you have that generator, or let's say when you have a, a Taurus here, and you sit here with this Taurus, and you just imagine this expanding out, and then you make it the size of your house, then you make it the size of your town, your city block, however it is, you just keep expanding that out and visualizing that. And you can intend to hold that there. And I think that's going to be an individual thing, depending on your belief and what you will allow. Um, but I certainly do not want to try to put any limits on either of those because um, we're each going to be able to work with the tools just a little bit differently. Um, and that is based on you know everything that we are as an individual. So, Nathan, yeah, please do keep playing with that and expanding that because, you know, that's, that's such a, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, Rosa, how can we work with manifestation with the alchemist set? Mm, that's, that's a great question. So manifestation, we are infinitely abundant. We can create whatever we want in this here now moment. The only thing that prevents us from doing so is our blocks, our limitations, our beliefs, our programs, and a few other things that we probably don't know about. So 
how do we use the alchemist set to clear the limiting beliefs programs and all of that to allow us to create and to manifest all that our heart's desires well for one your heart's desires of the human has to be in alignment with the heart's desires of the soul so being in the space sacred space of the heart connecting more with your soul aligning just having the intention of aligning all time space everything that you are bringing in everything that you are as a soul into this here now moment oh, and then allowing the abundance allowing the creation allowing the manifestation and and doing it in that that soft way uh, and not um you know using your mind and trying to focus and i'm going to create this right here in the palm of my hand and you're just mental focus and that's not it um it is that stepping back and you have it softly your intent of what it is that you're manifesting creating and you keep it soft and subtle because um the universe your soul it all knows what it is that you are intending to manifest here but as long as you can allow and let go of how it is that you truly see it because that is what brenda always says too about this creation and our intentions when we are creating and manifesting is that it may not look exactly how you as the human intend that it looks um, because it is, has to be in alignment with you and the universe your soul and so the more is we as the human can step into that alignment with source soul universe and the, the more the creation is just going to come through um, so the alchemist set is phenomenal for the allowing of of the release of the blockages the programs the beliefs that hold back that abundance from flowing and so that would simply be just doing the meditations, the allowing of the release of all those blockages. And you can make this up as you go, be in the heart. You know what it is that you wanna do. You wanna release all limitations and blocks from allowing you to be a creator and a manifester. And so that's all it takes. Simple, 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 make it your own, be in the heart with it. Uh, let's see would you speak about your collaboration with the blue glass water company their solution solutions are so expensive is there any difference with what we are doing with the tensor rings versus their filtration system oh so huh, i do not know about what they are doing with their filtration system for this blue glass water uh blue glass water company now i know that those blue glass bottles um that we that we do uh collaborate with um the gal who owns that company um she has promoted us in the tensor rings but if this is the same people that i assume you're talking about here rosa is i do not know what they are doing with filtering water all i knew is their blue bottles that they create for water um but as far as to kind of give a comparison i guess for you know restructuring water if you you can get all those fancy pieces of equipment that can balance ph um you know but most of those equipment will actually create your um you know you can create whatever ph you want with the water high or low you know so i mean they're a lot of those systems they, they're going to filter the water which tensor fields do not filter water they only energize it restructure it but in that process we've seen that there's actually been fluoride that has been changed in the water so i mean it is still doing something physical but that physical starts as the energetic when we are working with water and the tensor fields versus a lot of these other um, devices that actually do physically filter out and also change the the ph the structure of the water um so p 
people who use those different styles of machines, we still suggest using a tensor ring just to harmonize, to bring back more of the life into the water, the consciousness into the water, which is what the tensor rings do. So using those styles of devices along with the tensor rings is, is what we've always suggested there. But um, yeah, sorry, I'm not sure about the, the rest of the filter systems that this blue bottle, blue bottle water company is using. Renard, hey Renard. I'm being led by dreams, video, vid, videos and pictures, my waking consciousness to make and work with the traditional harmonizer. Have you played with the energetics of Golden Fire or Divine I Am with those? I know you don't sell them. Oh no, so see, I've never made a harmonizer in my, this lifetime. Now I have a jig, one of Slim's jigs that he used and he gifted to somebody and then they gifted it to me to make a harmonizer, but I have never ever been drawn to make a harmonizer. Um, don't know why, just never been drawn to make one. Um, and there's a lot of people out there who, who do make the harmonizers, but I, yeah, you know, um, so I, I, don't know what to say. I, I own a harmonizer. Uh, the harmonizer that I own was one that I bought way back when I first started my journey here 11, 12 years ago with the tensor rings. And actually, I bought it before I started the journey with the tensor rings. Um, so it's been about 12 years ago, and it was from David WH. Uh, David was one of the people who was in that original group with Slim Spurling when they were creating the tools. And so David, and I don't even know what his initial stand for because he's always been very secretive. Um, and I don't even know how to contact him anymore, but he used to work with Drun below Melchizedek. Um, after Slim passed, then um, David was coming in and making the harmonizers for Drun below in his classes because Drun below was a big um, you know, proponent of the Sperling tools and everything. So um, that is the only harmonizer that I own and yeah, again, just never been drawn to make the harmonizer, but, um, and that's just us personally. So I don't have any experience with the harmonizer and the other frequencies. Uh, Diane, I had a large alchemist set and the large practitioner set to my sits pyramid that has a small harmonic field trio as well. The energy is very strong. Any comments? That's pretty fantastic, Diane. Um, because yes, I've done that too. The, the 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 pyramid that's in our studio that we have for for people coming in. That's what we've done too. Is we've added both of the of the the, the practitioner set that we had, and then we added the the alchemist rings to it, and. Um, and then, so basically the, the practitioner set that you have with the trio, the heavy duty rings, is the harmonic creation field trio as well. And then there's that smaller harmonic creation field trio, um, which sits on top, that home version. And so, yeah, I don't know what else to comment besides it is, it's pretty powerful. I really like adding that alchemist set to that ascension pyramid. Um, to me, it, it just brings through a lot more and it's, it's very peaceful, but yet it's very physically, um, you know, it, it seems like it's bringing it more into the physical than it was even before. Um, and of course, it is working deeper into our entire being than it has before. Um, so yeah, I don't really have much else to say about that one. Um, Let's see. Uh, Rosa, I just bought several Divine I Am tools for my home and immediately it caused my spouse to bring out his anger and wrath. How do we stay in neutrality while others resist this energy? That is really a good question. Um, you know, we've heard so many stories at the studio. People call in and they talk to Mary and so many people have been talking recently about those around them, neighbors and such, that are just leaving their sp leaving the space. They're just they're they're just leaving. People that are coming in are beautiful. 
is, is what people are saying. Um, so it does cause disruptions. It can cause disruptions as people are transmuting and releasing. But the beautiful thing here is, Rosa, that it is great that this stuff is coming up because as it comes up and you're in that field, it's releasing it. It's not just coming up and then it's there to be dealt with. It is coming up and it is allowing it to be released. Um, so that's, that is, um, sorry, I'm just turning on the sound of my phone. That is something that is a huge it's a great way to look at what's going on there with the the anger and stuff that's coming up is that as it's coming up it is getting into the core and so how do you hold your composure around those that you love that that is happening and that is just being in the heart space and holding the space for them um, but you don't want to try to hold space for others until you are in your space and so it's just Go into the heart, breathing. I tell you, breathing is such a huge thing. When you take your Trinity breath and you actually take in deep breaths, and you don't have to do the Trinity breath, you can just take in some deep breaths, period. And it is amazing on how that starts to shift. So do your Trinity breath, take in the deep breaths, and try to hold that. Um, and, you know, just know that things are actually happening there, that things are occurring, releasing, and it's going to be, it's going to be good. Um, and, you know, like, gosh, just keep the tools close to him as well. Uh, Diane, how's the Taurus pendant, which is which is only the opening to the divine I am, affected by the upgrade of all the tools to the divine I am, chalice, harmonized with energies. So the Taurus pendant that we created, um, the silver Taurus pendant, and yes, this very much is seen as that opening to where all this other energies that we're working with. So this was the opening where like the, um, Divine I Am Activator Pendant, you know, versus the Taurus Pendant. The Divine I Am Activator Pendant is very much taking us into that space. But yet, yes, the Taurus Pendants are shifting as well as all of the tools. So as soon as we brought in the Chalice Energies, the Chalice permeated all the tools. But the Chalice is a really subtle energy, um, really subtle. And so that chalice energy permeating the tools is fantastic. Um, most people won't actually consciously know it. The divine I am is also one that has permeated all the tools as well. And the divine I am, it's, um, which since that divine I am is, divine I am has permeated the tools, it is allowed, like, let's say, um, the example I gave here a week or two ago was the Wi-Fi ring, which is the golden fire. It's still going to be the golden fire, but on the outskirts of that field is that divine I am. And so that will be there at any time that the person is ready to access it and to utilize it. Well, the person, the soul. Well, um, so with the Taurus pendant, yes, that divine I am is very much coming through here and that is shifting the energetics of it um, so I really feel that all the tools that we've been creating since the beginning of the summer everything that's gone out the door has these new layers in them and they are going to allow for growth there they will keep up much better with your growth than any of the older tools, you know, especially, you know, kind of like the, um, when we used to make the, the Sperling Cubit and the 177 megahertz, 188 megahertz, things like that. Those ones just, um, those ones are even boosted too with all of the, the extra energetics. Um, but 
the Taurus pendant um, is still a phenomenal pendant. And so even if you haven't got a Taurus pendant and you would like to get one, but you're concerned on whether it's going to be carrying any of the newer energies, it is going to be carrying the newer energies as well. So the Taurus pendants are still a fantastic tool and should always be. They should keep up with our growth just as much as any of the new tools do. Uh, let's see. Could you speak about the spinners for tools? What are they and which tools to use? Oh, certainly. So, you know, um, it's just that the tools have always loved to be in motion. Um, and so when you, the, the spinners are simply um, that we've been talking about are, uh, you can get it from Amazon for, it used to be like seven, eight bucks, six, seven, eight bucks. Um, and it's just, it holds like 2D batteries and it's just a cylinder object that has a little hook on the bottom with an on off switch. And it's for, um, the, I think they call them wind spinners. They're for those, um, you know, those different wind metal objects that you hang out on your porches and outside that spin. These are the battery operated ones that will just make them spin all the time. So that's what um, we've talked about here for the past week or two is using those spinners to hang like your Taurus on because the Taurus is love to spin too. So even your Taurus pendant, your necklace, um, you could put one of those spinners up in your bedroom and when you are done with your necklace at night and you go to take it off, you could hang it on that spinner and let it spin. Um, you know, my mom, she has uh, a, a one that's a plug-in. It, they're made for disco balls. So if you're hanging heavier objects on them, um, they make spinners for disco balls and, and they're electric or they plug into the wall. And so that's what my mom has, and she just has hers on all the time, and it just sits there and spins and just keeps the energy moving and clear in her space. Um, so what tools to use it for? Um, let's see. The Taurus is for sure. We've seen, you know, people love to spin those. Um, the Untok, the key, that's a good one that a lot of people will spin, as well as the activator. I know a lot of people will hang the activator and spin it. Um, you know, and even just a tensor field generator, a Gaia sphere, or even just a ring, because even a ring where it's just creating a column of energy, that column, you know, it's just creating a column. When you're spinning that, that column, it's just creating like a, you know, like a searchlight, like a lighthouse. It's just sending that beam all around as that ring's spinning. Versus some of the other tools like the torus and the generators that create more of a field, it's just creating that spinning field. Um, let's see, Diane, what is your recommendation for how one would release a familial, a generational negative vortex that is not geographical using the tensor tools? Is it meditation with the tools? Yes, it is meditation with the tools. The tools will assist in keeping you held in that higher space but it is still going to be the consciousness work, the meditation that you need to do to release the things that are not yours or that are generational. Um, we'll do something here at the end of, of here of the program today where we'll go through and we'll just do a meditation and release, um, we'll release our ancestors. That's what we'll do which will help to release all of that. Uh, Linda, hello, I just received the Regeneration Generator. Does it have the Divine I Am in it? Yes, so all of those, those last, that last set of Divine I Am generator, or uh, Regeneration Tensor Field Generators that we had on that closeout all have the Divine I Am in them also that I put in there intentionally so they are carrying that divine I am as well as that regeneration where any of the divine I or any of the regeneration generators that you had prior to that closeout sale they're going to be mainly the regeneration but the divine I am is still going to be present just like we discussed with all the tools it's still going to be outside in the field and will come through as is needed but yeah, if you got one of the um, regeneration generators that's been on closeout, and that's 
pretty phenomenal thing that you have for sure. Um, Brenda, hi, I was just wondering if the silver golden fire generator has been upgraded. Hmm. Uh, that's, that's a good question. Yes, actually it has. So, okay. So the silver golden fire generator that we have is a little one inch generator and it is made with the, the golden fire infinity wire. So the, the same, the same, um, piece of silver flattened wire that we use to make the golden fire infinities in silver is the same wire that is used for that generator. Now it has been a month or two, it's maybe two or three months since I updated all of the infinities. So now then when you get an infinity in the past month or two or three, sorry, I don't know the exact time, they are actually all divine I am. So all the infinities got upgraded to the divine I am. Um, that was one tool that it felt right to do with. Um, but it has not been reflected on the website, obviously. It's still being promoted as the golden fire. So that little generator, that little silver golden fire generator is still carrying the golden fire, but it is deeply embedded with that divine I am as well. So that one is the one, because that's something that um, with the generators that came a while back as, as I was seeing the generator and that it had all the frequencies in it. And so I started playing with that idea, but um, we, we didn't get too in depth with it because we weren't supposed to do that to change all the generators this way to where they had all of everything in them. We, we just, we're not supposed to do that because we need to keep the integrity of what this original generator is for the people that are attracted to it. So if you have a harmony generator, it's still going to be a harmony generator, but that's where that whole concept of that divine I am is also out here and going to be accessible in this harmony generator. But that harmony generator is going to be there first and foremost. So that's going to be still the same with this um, golden fire generator is that it's not like the other one we were just talking about on closeout where I totally anchored in the divine I am. The silver generators, because I'm just looking at that now too, Brenda, because I thought maybe those silver generators would be fully the divine I am, but they still feel like they are the golden fire first and then the divine I am comes after that. Unlike the infinities that we made, those ones are fully the divine I am. So telling you the story about how they're made with the same wire um, does not really apply here because once that generator is made, it is still the golden fire first and foremost. And then the divine I am comes over top. Um, but, you know, as we move forward, we're still trying to figure out what it is that we're going to be creating in the divine I am and what we are going to be letting loose. And that's kind of part of that subscription service program is as we get more full blown into this and start creating more and more of the generators and getting those out there. Um, we can start getting more feedback too. Uh, Rosa, I have an infinite, an infinite light pendant and now I'm getting the silver alchemist pendant. Would you ever consider posting pictures of how we can hitch various tools together as part of your website for idea generating or sell clips for us to add to our tools? That is truly a thought. Um, and Rosa, I know, uh, I know Grenard sent me a picture the other day of his, um, of his infinite light pendant along with this. Holy smokes, that is a potent combination. That is powerful using the alchemist set along with that infinite light pendant um, is pretty phenomenal. Um, so how to hook those together and, and to show that, thank you, Rosa. Yeah, that is something totally for us to consider is, is a way, um, you know, to even put on the website on how, what tools are really potent together. 
I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, JR, can you put the Ascension Pyramid on the ceiling above your above your bed? Any other suggestions working for it? Uh, yes, JR. I tell you what, that was a huge shift for me. Is so you take that mini that mini Ascension Pyramid, and it has the little eyelet on top that you can hang that from the ceiling. Now, when you take that mini Ascension Pyramid and hang that from the ceiling, or you take it you know, however high up you go, imagine that those legs, they extend down etherically all the way into the earth. So, you know, in reality, you don't need to have the eight foot pyramid. You can hang the 18 inch pyramid up there and these, those legs extend out energetically. Now, when I hung the mini ascension pyramid above my bed i was blown away and i was like why have i not done this before because i started to get a good night's sleep for one for two i was waking up and just wanting to write i woke up inspired to write down stuff um so for me with that mini ascension pyramid yes that was a huge shift and i wished i would have started that sooner um, so I, yes, I love having that pyramid above my bed, um, and suggesting any other ways for working with it. Most certainly. So with that mini Ascension pyramid, you can also, you know, you can sit it on top of the refrigerator when you're not using it to keep, you know, to charge, energize your food. You can actually sit it, um, you know, if you have it sitting on your table or your counter, wherever it's at, you can also use it, um, you know, you can put whatever underneath of it, whether it is supplements, um, a picture of your loved ones, um, whatever it is, it is basically acting as kind of like a radionics broadcaster. Um, so that whatever you put in there, and it is your intention to send the energy to what, you know, in radionics, you would call it the witness, whether it is a, you know, in radionics, they usually use like DNA samples, like fingernails, hair, whatever, but a picture, a photograph of something. Or if you are trying to work with the weather and you put a map of your region and you're asking for rain, um, you know, you're asking to clear the smoke or the smog, you know, um, whatever it is that you wish to run energy to, you can put a picture and that picture is simply a way for you to have your attention and intention with running energy to that specific person, place, or thing. Um, so that's another way that you can use that pyramid when it's not in use. Uh, let's see. And Rosa, my question follows JR's. Can we put the pyramid in our attic to affect the house? Yes. Now, the pyramid is always going to be, you know, the outside of it is always going to be radiating, but it is inside the pyramid where you find those other higher fields like the field of neutrality. Um, and so I think that's a phenomenal idea to have the pyramid, you know, up high in the home to where it just radiates through. And if you do, I us see, I have my motorcycle that, you know, you guys probably seen some of the pictures on social media where I have that mini pyramid on the back of my motorcycle. So they can weather, they can be outdoors, you just got to wire the rings and the wings of talk and everything together. So you could actually mount it on top of your roof too. Um, I don't know, it just kind of be a, a nice decoration for all of your neighbors just to think you're crazy, I guess. Um, Diane, would you recommend adding the harmonizer ring to the Taurus pendant? That's a good question. I had not added the harmonizer ring to the Taurus pendant. What would happen if the chalice ring was added as well? So, yeah, I just added my harmonizer ring to the Taurus pendant. And yes, wow, yeah, that feels really good. So, yes, adding a harmonizer ring to the Taurus pendant feels phenomenal. Um, what would happen if the chalice ring was added as well? Does the Taurus pendant still have the divine I am chalice harmonizer imbued with it since it was created before the summer? And again, the Taurus does still have those, the, the divine I am, the chalice, and the harmonizer in it, but 
it's not again at the forefront. But if you take your um, if you take your alchemist rings and you add the Taurus pendant to all three of those, the divine I am, the chalice, and the harmonizer, that's pretty potent. Um, yeah, to me that it it totally it it upgrades. I don't know if that's the right word. That's not the right word, but um, it it certainly amplifies everything and brings in a lot of newer, higher fields when you use this trio with any of the tools. So yeah, thank you. I might start wearing my Taurus pendant again with my trio. Um, and Because I, I stopped wearing my Taurus pendant when I got this, not, not for any purpose except for it's wearing too much. Um, physically is all just physical. Um, Marsha, I plan to buy four grid point pyramids in the corner to bury to bury four grid point pyramids in the corners of my property. How deep should I put them in the ground? Do I need a center point in the house? And do I connect them with the golden fire and light wand or dragon wand? So when you put your grid points um, and you bury them, it does not matter how far you bury them. It's um, and the only reason that you would want to bury them is just so that they don't go running off or get run over by the lawnmower or horse stepped on. Ouch. So if you you know, when I've been sneaky and trying to get and trying to crit out a piece of property, um, you know that loved ones stay at, I've actually gone and just taken my grit points. I put them upside down into the ground and I just step on them and I push them down into the ground. Um, that works too. Or you can bury them, um, you know, and it does not matter how far you bury them. That, that echopoxy, that plant-based resin, it's going to take at least a hundred years for that to dissolve. Um, and it does not dissolve very fast at all. I mean, uh, I think it'll probably take more than a hundred years. Because when, we, when we've been looking at it, like if it's in the water, that we're not seeing that it is doing any detriment to the water because it, it um, dissolves away at such a slow rate. And that was even in salt water that we were looking at that. Um, so yeah, it really does not matter how far you bury them, um, just as long as they are out of um, you know, the way. And then, do I need a center point in the home? No, no, you don't need to have the center grid point in the home um, because basically just imagining that you are putting up your corners, whether there are four or three or five or ten, um, when you put those up and all your you and you already have that intention anyway in Working with the tools, your soul knows your intention when you're doing it anyway. So you don't have to have that hard intention from here, but you can, and it's okay when you're doing the grid points. You can have your intention when you put those four in that it is creating that space, that field in between, because when you're setting them there, you're having the intention of what you want that field to be, what flavor you want the space to be, whether it's for healing, for creativity, etc., etc. And you can put those intentions into there, but you don't have to, you know, go dig them up and reset them to reset your intention. All you need to do is go into the heart space and just imagine that field and just imagine whatever new intentions that you wish to put in there. Um, so it is as simple as that because these tools are being used by more than just the human. They're being used by you know, the soul as well. So, um, yeah. And then if you, if you do wish to connect them, so then the other part of the question was about using the golden fire and light wand or the dragon wand um, to connect them. And no, you certainly don't have to do that to connect them. They'll connect automatically, but you certainly can. And, and I'm seeing that as, as a phenomenal thing. You can anchor that column of light with your golden fire and light wand you can use the dragon wand to create space in there and they're all going to work together. So if you anchor that column of light with the golden fire and light wand, 
and you anchor it even into one of the pyramid corners, it's going to affect that whole space. It's going to amplify and bring in all of those extra energies into the space. All right. Jump over here to check on chat to see what's happening. Got a silver alchemist pendant this Wednesday. The pain near my right ribs is finally going away gently overnight. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Let's see. Oh, and somebody said they bought their spinner on Amazon for 12 bucks and added 1D battery. That's great. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm just reading through the chat still. Um, and Janae, have you used satellite maps to place points on instead of physically placing on the ground? And, you know, so there is a lot of people in the radionics field who will actually take a, a map, an aerial map, and, um, you know, or a satellite image map, um, here is Janae suggesting, and lay that out and put your grid points on there or put your tools on there. Yes, you can certainly do that. Um, there's a lot of people, especially in radionics that I know of, um, that do take maps and they will put tools on them and they'll broadcast in those areas for like broadcasting for rain or, or whatever it is that their intentions are. Um, so you can certainly use a map instead of going out and placing them directly. Um, and that's something, again, yeah, just with any of the tools, like with the pyramids that we were talking about, the mini ascension pyramid and other uses, yes, you could totally slip that, that photograph of like your farm or your neighborhood underneath of there so that you're broadcasting to everything and everybody within that area because it's just based on your intention and always have the intention from the heart space. That way you have the backing of everything from the home space. Ethan, I'm wearing the Regeneration Tensorfield Generator with a small alchemist set inside the three inch divine I am ring and the energy is amazing. My question is, how do the Regeneration and the divine I am energetics combine? I can feel them separate and also together. You know, that is really a good question, Ethan, on how the Regeneration and the divine I am are interacting um, because that that's actually came up into my awareness a few times here over the past days is how those two do interact together and I haven't and I have not taken the time to sit down and play with that so I I do not have an answer for that question Nathan on on how they are on how they are acting combined um, so Let's go ahead, you guys. Um, I actually have to get going here in a minute. So if we could go and move on to our meditation. Um, I'm trying to remember. Do you guys, does anybody remember what we did for meditation last week? Um, oh, man, I'm trying to remember what we did last week. I think did last week did we do the one where we were in our heart and we expanded out and we went out into our beds and into our chair and all of that. I think that's what we did last week. Yeah, that's what we did last week. That was a phenomenal meditation. I'm pretty sure that was here. So, okay. This week for meditation. Cool. Thanks Judy for um, confirming that. Okay. This week is a meditation of releasing ancestors and you do not have to participate if you do not wish so why would we ever want to release our ancestors aren't they the ones who are helping us aren't they the ones who were carrying their crap from generations and generations carrying all the curses all the problems all the issues all of the lack all of the old programming solidified all of that in our dna um, not really pointing fingers, but you know, we still love them, but 
we want to release them. Releasing your ancestors is huge. That is another part of the next step is releasing ancestors. So simple as being in the space, having the intention and doing it. So here we go, you guys. Um, remember, everything is always done in the highest and best good. And when we're working from the heart space, it is your soul that is doing the work. Our job as the human is to allow the soul to do what is in our highest and best good. So we're going to go into the heart space. We're going to allow and we're going to know that our soul is in charge, each and every individual soul, and that it will do what is in your highest and best good. All right, here we go. Okay, let's take our breaths to go into the heart. Go into the heart space. And I'm just letting you do this how you do it. There we go. So we are all together, all of us who all of us right here and now, and all of us who will ever watch this. We are all holding space together. We are all powerful beings. We are going to bring together all that we are. So imagining your soul coming together with all lifetimes, past, present, future, lifetimes, all aligned in this here now moment. It's just as simply allowing your soul to come more fully. So imagine your soul around you, in front of you, within you. All that light within your heart, that is your light, the light of the soul, the light of creation. Now imagining all of those trees, all of your lineage, all of your ancestors, all those lines, we are sending that love, that light of you, of the universe, of creation into the heart of every ancestor. With the intention of a releasing all that no longer serves. All belief structures, curses, programs, any of the stuff that no longer serves you, just allowing that release allowing the harmonization, allowing this to touch the life of every one of your ancestors all the way back to the beginning. As the DNA is lit up throughout all time, and this changes the entire lifetime every being who came before you as all time is here and now. We can change all time from this very moment as we go back through. Okay, it is done. Feel the tingles in your body. And hopefully you feel lighter. All right. Hey, you guys. Have a phenomenal week. We're going to try to record everything that goes on here in the upcoming workshop in Clinton, Iowa, this Tuesday. And we'll see what we can get out there. All right, you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the questions. Um, deep gratitude. All right. We'll see you next time.